everyone, it's Naomi Sneakers, and welcome to the Firecracker Department. This is the show where each episode I talk to dynamic, interesting, inspiring women in the entertainment industry about their victories, their challenges, and lessons that they've learned along the way in their career. We have these really great, really candid discussions about what it's taken them to get to where they are in their life. It's kind of one of my favorite things to do. Today, I get to talk to Danny Kind. Now, you'll know Danny Kind from Winona Earp or Working Moms on CBC or from just being a kick ass lady. She is really, I mean, I've known her for a while because the show that I'm on, Mr. D, is also on CBC and that's the Working Moms Show Network. Uh, so we'll sort of see each other at parties. But, you know, you never really get a chance to talk to people at those things. You sort of, hi, and, oh, you look nice, and what are you doing? I can't hear you. My feet hurt. That's sort of the discussion that happens at most of the parties. Uh, Danny and I, uh, we first met weirdly. Like, I remember going to New York, and we speak about this a little bit in the um, in the episode. But I was getting off a shuttle, and she was on the same bus with Tommy Amber Peary. And she was like, hey, we know each other from Canada. And she's just a real bold and vivacious lady. And I feel really lucky not only to have her on the show, but to get a chance to know her better. We have this awful slash weird slash fun experience when we went to, um, you know, they set up these kind of fittings for uh, folks to try on dresses that you might wear to a big event. And so I went to try on some dresses and I tried on a whole bunch. And to be honest, it was making me feel worse and worse the more dresses I tried on because I'd be like, oh, this is a gorgeous dress. I'd try it on and be like, oh, I can only put in like one thigh into this dress. Um, and it wouldn't zip up. I can't go to a party without zipping up a dress, or can I? No, I decided I couldn't. Uh, and then Danny turned up with Juno from Working Moms, and we were all sort of like shaking our head, like, what are we doing here? And none of these dresses work for us, and it just ends up making you feel crappy. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. When you have like dresses that you want people to wear, and then nothing fits. Nothing fits like a normal person. I mean, there's those folks that it does fit perfectly, but it's not me. I think I went away from that place with a lovely lipstick, though. Talk about lemonade. Uh, so there's that. But anyway, I just love, I think she's so funny and she's so fearless and she's so truthful. So if you say, hey, you're so fearless, she'll go, yeah, I have my days, which I really like as well, because it makes her just, just so likable. In this episode, we talk a lot about what it is to be in this industry and how to make it work creatively. And, um, you know, this past week, I've been watching a lot of Netflix or like various TV shows that I find really inspiring. It's funny how like TV now is like such a, it's like research. I'm doing my research. I've watched six hours of TV. It's research. Uh, but I've been watching things like AP Bio, which is a new show with some amazing Second City alum involved, like Michael Bryan and Mary Sohn, and uh, then also Shrink that Tim Baltz um, created. And it's so great to see like folks, not just from Second City, but from all different communities, uh, and they're creating stuff. And, and it's good. Like, it's funny. It's not shows that make you go, oh, well, that's something. <laughs> It shows that, you know, like I'm really laughing out loud. Shrink and AP Bio, I think, are fantastic shows. And I would watch them even if I didn't know anybody in them. Uh, and as some of you know, I'm writing a show right now. And it's not easy. Like the step from like writing the show to producing to actually having it air and then supporting it in the world of marketing. It's all like big steps. And um, I, um, I really, I really admire the folks that get it done. I've also been talking to a lot of women these days about um, power and what makes them feel powerful. It's actually every month, um, if you didn't know, every month we have a spark question, like the spark question of the month for the firecracker department. And I pose a question on the last Sunday of every month in my Instagram chat, which is live. And then I see what kind of feedback there is. So this past month, I've been asking people what makes them feel powerful. So it's really been in my brain a lot in the last two weeks. I wonder what you guys are doing. Whoever is listening to this, what are you working on these days? And when I ask you what you're doing these days, you know, it's not necessarily just in the form of creation. Like creativity comes in so many different aspects 
And uh, I would love to know how what you're creating and, and how you got your start doing it, because that's what we're going to talk about next Spark question. And I would love to hear from all of you about that. You know, my friend Jet Wilkinson, who's just a dynamic dynamo. She's just incredible. Um, she, and I'm going to have her on the show sometimes, so stay tuned for that. But she said uh, that your power needs to come from within. And if you share that power to empower each other, that can be unstoppable. And I love that. I love that so much. It's really resonating with me and my head and my heart. So uh, here we go. Let's, let's, without further ado, let's get into some Danny Kind and uh, keep that power train of going. Here she is, Danny Kind. Thank you for going back and forth so many times. Thank you for making space for us. I wanted to do this. I'm so happy. It's so great. You look fantastic. Uh, Oh, thank you. I'm going to do a table read after, so I was like, maybe I'll put some things on. You look great. My jacket is covered in snot because my child. I hear you guys go. It was great to meet you, Dan. You too. Yeah. I'll be back around noon. Thank you. All right. I'll text you later. Here's what I know about you, which is not a lot. Like, we see each other at parties and things yeah. like that. So we have these kind of, and this happens a lot with um, these interviews, is, uh, I'm just going to move that towards you. Oh, yeah. Our, I can sit like a normal person. No, no, no. Person. Sit, sit okay. comfortably, for okay. sure. I just want you to be comfortable. Thanks. Um, is that I, you know, you know people sort of like on the outskirts of our community, and then we have these talks, and they're like, oh, I didn't know all these yeah. great details. But you have such a private um, life on social media. Oh, you think so? Yeah, like oh. I was because we do. You know, I do my research and I find out. <laughs> and I was like, I, I know you have kids, but there's not a lot of baby pictures. You don't like you might have a couple. Yeah, but it's also because it's in conjunction with working moms. I'm like, is this yours or is yeah. this a, a prop baby <laughs> or is this even a baby? Who knows? I have a separate account. Uh, I wasn't like very heavily on social media and before working moms, and then they were like, "Could you tweet about the show?" And I was like, "I don't." Okay. So I had to like figure out Twitter and all that mm-hmm. shit. And then I was just like, went back in my history of my, I have another Instagram account for your baby. For myself. That makes and sense. only like a few of my people. And because then I went back and I was like, oh, I don't want anybody to see those. Yeah. It's like, it's I, private. Yeah. It's publicly private in yeah. like some really fucked up way. Well, so I post all my kids' stuff there, yeah. and then once in a while, I'll, it's a very weird thing to navigate. Like, do you post something about your kid? Do you not? And it's how do you, super what do you, weird. What's your take on that? I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm exploiting them, kind of. Or, like, sometimes I'm like, are they going to be stoked about this when they're 18? Or are they going to be like, why the fuck did you post that? <laughs> I think they'll be both. I think Hopefully. there'll be times they'll be like, why did you post that? Like, I remember being mortified Seeing, um, cause we, we, like my father's really into slides. So we'd have like slideshows at our house. That is so cool. Which was so whatever, seventies, eighties, but, um, we had these slideshows and inevitably there was one slide of me sitting on his motorcycle without, with bare bum, with a bare bum. Yeah. And I was mortified. I know. And I don't want them to feel and like I that. And I, oh, I would cry. I would be no. like, you have to destroy that. <laughs> and he'd say, don't worry, I'll destroy it. And he didn't. And then I would come around in the next view and I'd be like, you lied to me. So not only is there nudity out there of me, but right. there's also a lying Honestly. Pattern. And you know, like... His, I just imagine him like bringing it back, being like, "The slide's coming up. Oh, Here he comes, oh click, no. click. Oh boy, I'm gonna get her good." Or more likely, like, "Oh, I forgot. I right. should uh, probably yeah, yeah. skip this one." Oh, yeah, but, yeah. So I can imagine with social media because you have two. I have two: a three-year-old and a four-year-old. Unbelievable. It's. I just had like the worst morning with them. Really? Like, yeah. What's it was, a, what? I don't have kids, so what is a worst morning in your world? It was amazing in itself. <laughs> for, me, for me, it's like, no, oh, I, I don't know. My tea didn't work out. I don't know. My, my worst morning is probably not the same. What's they, yours? My, uh, we created a chore chart in our house the okay. other day. Okay. Because my kid was like, I want money to put in my piggy bank. He okay. doesn't know what money is. But he was like, I didn't want a thing to put in the thing. So I was like, let's make a chore chart. So this morning he woke up and he was like, I want to do all those things so you'll give me money. And I was like... This is a great fucking morning. It's amazing. I was I've like, got a kid working for yes. me, and it's legal. I was like, pick yeah. that up. He was like, okay, picked it up. I was like, put those clothes on. He like put them on. I was like, this fucking rules. And then I went to the bathroom, 
and both of my kids screamed at me for 10 minutes because they didn't want me to wipe myself after I took a yeah. shit. Screamed. Screamed yeah. like I was torturing them for 10 minutes to the point <laughs> where... That? What is that? Go into the psychology I don't know. of that. Well, don't okay. wipe your bum! I was like, I have to wipe my bum. There's poo on it. They were like, no! <laughs> oh. And then what I got to school and dropped them off and, like, cried in the car for a bit and oh. then, like, zipped it up. And I was like, okay, I just need a coffee. Oh my I'll be God. fine. It was just a psycho morning. But what is, like, that, like, sometimes I can understand, like, a kid's <laughs> mind where, like, oh, well, they need the attention. So they, like, a like kid wets his pants and he hasn't done that for years. He does yeah. it because he needs attention. That makes sense. Yeah. But not having you. What the fuck is I that? I don't want you to have hygiene. Right? Like, it doesn't make sense. It makes sense. zero sense. It's psycho. And I yeah. often am like, you're killing me. <laughs> and I say shit like that. And then like, you know, four days later, they're like, mommy, am I killing you? And I'm like, no. Not anymore. I really love you. And it's just so much guilt. Yeah. It's so stupid. I feel like that is motherhood. Like sometimes, like the stress I feel about my dog's health, I would multiply that by a kajillion yeah. if I had kids. Or like the yeah. guilt in connection with like... Oh, like I left him too long, I'm and that home. would like multiply it because he didn't he's got get a brain. Air today, yeah, yes, because yeah. he's got a brain. <laughs> <laughs> well, like your kids have developing brains. My dog will always be like a child, right? Like right. he'll always have to be told not to eat that thing. Whereas hopefully your kid will grow up and be like, "Hey, now I know not to eat poison." Why do? You, yeah, yeah, my maybe, dog know. maybe not, maybe not, maybe, maybe your child they'll be, be... world renowned poison eater. <laughs> So now that's like, and now you're off to a table read too. Yeah. So that's like. It's crazy. It's nuts. It's nuts. Because is this for working moms? No, it's for some new pilot. Oh, great. Yeah. Because I still read for Jason and John all the time. Yeah. And yeah. I love doing that. You've done that. I used to do a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. I I really like it. Because that's sort of like not where your start was, but you did that a lot. Yeah. Early days. Yeah. I find it such a good muscle. It right? is. And I, I need it. Some, like, sometimes I'm like, please let me come in yeah. and read because it makes you... Uh... You get to work off all of these actors in the city that I'll yeah. probably never get a chance to work with. And yeah. I love that so much. Yeah. And I also love hearing what the table says, you know, about the process and, like, watching how the director alters what they're doing, like, for each actor coming in. Like, it's I don't feel like they're just, like, regurgitating the same shit. Like, yeah. I just love it so much. Yeah, I feel like you have such a um, an actor's brain with your approach to TV. Does that make sense? Like sometimes people have a very like I don't need uh, like you. Very, you seem very self aware with your process. That is so nice of you to say. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't think you take it lightly. Like sometimes you know, and especially with comedy, because you have this crazy diverse. Uh, life right now with Winona Earp and working mm-hmm. moms like mm-hmm. those couldn't be further from each other yeah um and you know you do comedy and you're like well I just go in there I say the lines and you make some jokes but it feels like you dig it a little bit deeper I have good coaches yeah what's that like help me through? yeah do you do like acting coaches on set or do you go to your I have two coaches I have one that I study with every week and then I have another one that um she'll um uh, coach me through the whole season. So like with all the scripts, she's done all the working moms seasons with me. And, yeah. and yeah, she's just like, like that's, here's the script, but like exactly like what's underneath yeah. that and what's underneath that and what's underneath that. And she's so good. Yeah. She's so good. And so uh, do they work together? Like, do they know? They don't even know each other. They don't even I've know. I've just worked with both of them separately for 10 years. Can you say who they are? Yeah. John Ribbon, who does Meisner. I, oh, I yeah. teach, I, I study with him. And, and then Michelle Lonsdale-Smith, who does sort of uh, an array of different things. Mm-hmm. Like, very, very. They and all have their own styles. They've yeah. all pulled from, you know, like John doesn't really teach Meisner how it's been taught. It's his own style yeah, of it. Yeah, he made it his own. Yeah. And have you always done that? Did yeah, you? because I feel like, especially when you're on a show, I feel like you're just trying to do your best and all that shit. And there's not a lot of room to be messy and no. there's not a lot of room to play. And ideally that would be nice. But then I get to go to class every week and just shit the bed and be horrible. And, you know. Wipe your bum, please. Wipe your the, fucking yeah. bum. <laughs> just wipe it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it seems like that's such a, I don't know a lot of actors that do that. I, it seems like such a dedication to your craft. Yeah, uh, it's a gift to me, I think. Yeah. And the fact that they have stuck, those couches have stuck it out with me for that long, I think is really a testament to them because I came, like, you know, I came in with a lot of ego and a lot of, like, don't fucking give me a note and all that shit when I was, like, in my early 20s. And now 
I'm old and tired and just slowed down a bit and can hear things better. Right. And, you know, it's such a space. It's like a space for me to go and just be like, Bleh. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, make mistakes. Yeah. Don't you feel like that pressure on set to not make mistakes? Like, Fuck. it's so brutal because the time is, there's no time, right? So yeah. I get myself real nervous about that kind of stuff. I feel like you know exactly what you're doing, though. Especially with comedy. Like, and your, I feel like your specific comedy, like, even listening to your podcast is so um, smooth. Like, you just, I don't feel like you're ever setting up for a punchline. Listening no. to you. On I'm a- not a joke. I'm not a jokey joker yeah <laughs> i'm not a jokey joker which is a technical term in comedy <laughs> um i've heard it yes yeah, yes yes no go yeah. to the go to the dictionary uh do they have dictionary still just on comedy so, yeah. That's right, yeah that's right <laughs> um i think that's instincts too though that's muscles like i think you training like i i, I love that and i it's always my brain like i would love to find somebody that i connect with yeah and there's been a couple times when i've taking a class or something and I've just never really yeah I don't know gotten in their groove so yeah I really admire that because I think it is so good to make mistakes and it is so good to have a place to just fucking go I don't know I don't know that these sides don't make sense to me or like sometimes you get an audition you're like these aren't close to who I am yeah and how do I find her how do I like even get there yeah yeah like how did you find Anne in working moms oh I knew her exactly like right away yeah I read the, I read it and yeah. I was like, yep. Yeah. Also, I went through that. Like I got pregnant six months after I gave birth and got pregnant right after she right. had just had a baby. Like all of the things about being a mom. I was like, yep, yep, yep. And also I like her sense of humor is like very close to me. Yeah. And her. I love, I love that character. I love her so. I just want to play her till I die. Yeah. I love she's her so really much. Fun. She's such a gift. And the way they write her, like, is really just the voice of the audience. It's what the audience yeah. wants to say. Yes. But does yes. It, can never. It to or... be ballsy. And, yeah. 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 And flawed. So flawed. Yeah. Normal. I feel like that's such a new world now, like, women being allowed to be flawed. I know. There was a time that people would be right, be like, well, we can't have a woman say that. Yes. And you're like, why, what? I have a problem with, like, um, I was talking about this yesterday, about, like, women being shown as just, like, unraveling. You know, like that, that kind of flawed really yeah. bothers me. Like I don't ever see a man on screen just unraveling and just like trying to keep it together. Mm. You know, like I feel like women, like the pendulum is swinging to make them super flawed. Yeah. And I'm hoping that eventually we'll just be <laughs> normal right. fucking people, I you know, know, like. But I, I mean, I think I see, I see like flawed men in that like nervous, nerdy guys. They like, just don't know how to get the woman. Yes. That's the only way they're flawed. Get it together. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're right. And so you read for Anne and you were like, I got this. I understand it. I knew it. Yeah. I was, and I was like, it was the first time that I was like, I'm your person. Mm-hmm. Just put me in coach. Yeah. Like, I can do this. Yeah. yeah. And then we went to LA and you we did tested. a chemistry test there. I'd never done one before. So stressful. I, it was crazy. Yeah. I didn't, I'm so naive about it. I didn't understand that when I got off the plane, I saw the guy with the working mom sign who was picking us up and I was like, oh, cool. And then I saw like 10 other women walking towards him and I was like, what's oh, happening? Cool. What's happening? <laughs> and he picked us all up and we all got in a van together and I was like, this is so, yeah. oh, I guess we're all doing this. Like I had no idea what it was going to be like. Yeah. Especially for Canada. That's a real, we don't do chemistry tests in Canada. Right. So that's so weird. And then when you, um. Met Catherine, were you, and you got the role, were you like, did you work on stuff, storylines and stuff? Like, you must talk about she just, your kid experiences constantly. Oh, yeah, we do. We yeah. do. But she just talked to me about the abortion line. That was the only thing that she yeah. was like, I just want to check in. I don't know where you, I don't know if you're religious. I don't know where you sit yeah. morally on this, but I just want to make sure that you're okay with conveying this story. And I was I love like, absolutely. Yeah. I love this storyline. What did you like about it? I didn't know that the majority of women that get abortions are married women yeah, with kids. I, that, yeah. I had no idea. And abortion is painted as such a like dirty girl thing or like a victim. Like you've either gotten yourself pregnant and you're probably lower income and probably super fucked up hmm. and getting an abortion or you're, you've been raped and you, you know, it's like, it's such a dark thing, mm-hmm. but it's like, if we all just pictured like a uh, married women, who are getting abortions, that's the majority of people? I was yeah. like, I had no idea. No, I didn't know that either. I, that's, I know so many women who have had abortions. Yeah. 
And they're fine. And they're smart. And they're... And it's choices, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But that's an interesting discussion to have with your um, yeah. creator, the show creator. Yeah. Also, they write all the scripts before the show we start. Yeah. So we know where we're going. That makes sense. But on Winona, I had no idea. Yeah. Literally no well, idea. No, you, I read that you uh, auditioned with sides that weren't even your sides. Made because, up sides. Um, Melanie was pregnant. Yeah. That whole, like, cause did you know she was pregnant? No, I flew out. When I flew out, I, I walked in the trailer just to, like, say hi to her. And she was getting her makeup done. She had a big sweatshirt on. And we were talking because we knew each other. And I know her other son. Um, and she came over when I had my first son. She came over. And it's not like we're very close, but we know each other. Yeah. She came over and she, like, came over for a visit to check That's in nice. with her. She brought me food. Oh, boy. So lovely. Yeah. Uh, so I walk into the trailer and we're talking, talking, talking. And she was like, oh, I got something to share with you. And I was like, what's up? And then she just lifted her. <laughs> yeah. And I just started crying. I was just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I could cry right now thinking about it. Yeah. Just like so. She killed it, man. Yeah. She was so. I was so motivated and like inspired by her doing that. Why? Seeing, what do you think? What do you think is the emotional trigger for that? Uh, Just seeing her every day at work. Handling it like a boss. And mm. also like. I think. Uh, the set is so stressful and we, none of us know what we're doing and it's hard to feel supported in that environment, I think. And she came to work every day and left her sort of left her pregnancy at home. Right. Like all the things that she was like going, she stuff. never brought it to work. Yeah. She was quiet and she kept to herself and then she didn't sometimes, but like, Knowing her as I know her, she's, like, fun and boisterous yeah. and, like, you know, she's, like, a great woman, but she never brought the pregnancy to work. She came and she did her job and she went home. And mm -hmm. I was, like, you're by yourself. You're not with your family. Yeah. Your husband and your kid are in Toronto. You haven't seen them. You're exhausted. You're in pain. And she was oh. just so professional. Yeah. It was like really moving. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting thing. I mean, I think she found it really empowering, too. Yeah. 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 And that role for you, like... When you talk about finding a role and, like, connecting to it, how did you connect to that role? Because that's not, like, Anne. No idea. Like, wh where did you start? I feel like I flubbed my way through that whole season. Yeah. I, I get that feeling. I don't agree with you and for you, but I understand when you're like, I'm just gonna... Yeah. But that's instincts, right? That's having the muscle that you've been working on with your coach. So yeah, that yeah, when yeah. When you're in this place where you're like, I don't know. I don't know. You sort of do. You just have to trust... They're yeah. like action, and you're like, Bleh! and they're like, and cut. can you do that again? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I know. So, but with Winona Earp, you got things like the night before, or like the day of, or what would you? No, get? they would have like a table read. I just didn't know right what was happening at any given moment. Like I was like, okay, I couldn't follow storylines. I couldn't make sense of things. I would try to whenever I could get Emily. I would be like. Hey, um, can I just, and she was like, I don't know. We should, we're figuring it out too. And I'm like, okay. So how did you, like, did you, what did, where I, did you turn? Uh, I, I took, oh, I generally do this, take a lot of stuff off other actors. Like I'll really pay attention to like what they're doing. And because the leads had been there the season before, I was just like, what's the vibe? What's going on? And then like, that informed my relationship with a lot of people. And Michael Eklund, like mm -hmm. his character, I really watched him in the first season. I was like, what is he doing? What is he bringing? Because he's the big villain of the show. And yeah. Emily was like, you're going to be the big villain of this season. Uh, I wish I would have known that I was a spider because I feel like I would have been able to embody put, that. Yeah, like put that yeah. into it. But the costume really helped. It was like so messy. Things you'll never hear. Like, I wish I knew I was a spider. <laughs> <laughs> it's like right? the greatest acting quote ever. Such actor shit talk, yeah. you know? But you're so smart with your attack on it. Where, where do you get that from? Who gave you that kind of inspiration? Mm, I have no idea. You just have I instincts have no idea. that way. I just. I think it's just general curiosity, you know? Like, I think we all are just, like, really big. We're, I think you sign up to, for this job because you have an interest in humanity. Yeah. So I think we all are just really good at looking at people. So uh, maybe that? I don't know. Yeah. Like, growing up, did you have any, like, um, heroes that you sort of admired and watched their style? I had a girl. I was in high school and in drama class, and our teacher brought... Um, and I didn't, I didn't know I wanted to be an actor. Like I was just like, I don't know, fucking around in drama class, yeah, you know? Yeah. That's and then, not a job. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
<laughs> and then, fucking around in an acting just, class a job? It is, it actually. Is. Yeah, yeah. yeah Colin Mockery makes a huge living at it. He just started following me on Twitter, and I got very excited and about so that. And so you should. He's a delight. He's yeah. a phenomenal person. Isn't he? And what a career that guy has had. Yeah, and is having. Like, he just played um, the fool in King Lear opposite Shauna McKenna. Here? Yeah. I didn't even know about I know. That. He does Shakespeare. That's and amazing. then he goes, and he is one of the funniest people in the world. An improv legend. I know. Anyway, so he he's fucking around for a living, which is great. So good. So then you were doing um, you were doing theater class in high school and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, I was in the drama class, sorry, and then my teacher brought in, like, an older student. Yeah. And she did a monologue, and I saw her transform from herself to another person to back to herself and then she left, and I was like, what just fucking happened? Oh. And that was when I was like, I want to do that. That was so cool. And then I, there was an improv team, and I'm very bad at improv. We start, I ran the improv team because nobody would do it. And then um, I just tried. I, I didn't even know about uh, like auditioning. I didn't know anything. My neighbor across the street uh helped me because he knew he went to an art school in Ottawa and he was like, you need a monologue and picked like Judith Thompson's white biting yes. dog <laughs> and was like, you should do this. And I was like, what is this? And yeah. he was like, just memorize it and you'll go and you'll say it in front of people. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And then I got into theater school and where did you go to theater school? Ottawa. It's not even a program anymore. Yeah. But Ottawa is, Ottawa has a lot of fantastic actors that have come out of that community. Do they? Yeah. Um, <laughs> as I say that, Melanie? I should have names. Huh? Melanie grew up in Ottawa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, well, my friend Naomi Wright and uh, uh, I think Jessica Holmes is from Ottawa. Really? Fact check. Anyway, I, think, <laughs> I feel like I talk to people and they're like, oh, uh, um, yeah, there's a bunch of people that I've been Tommy's you know, from Ottawa? Yeah, Tommy. Yeah. 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 So, like, I don't know. There's something about the restriction of that community that makes you go, I got to... I got to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. It's so vanilla. It's a beautiful small town that calls itself a city that is not. Yeah. It's just, it's so small town. It's government. It's 9 yeah. 5. Yeah. I mean. I found it very suffocating. And suffocating? So, suffocating. Suffragette? Sorry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that. Um, where, when did you, so then did you move to Toronto from Ottawa? I went to Montreal for two years. Did and you just go to school there? No, no, I just went escaped. there and I was like, because I was like, I got to get out of here. Yeah. And I was in a relationship. So I was like, it's close enough that I could still yeah. be in a relationship and be there. And then. Super sexy too. Like so Montreal, sexy. So. Going to Montreal. Oh my God. Learning how to smoke, everything. Everybody there is an artist. Oh. And I was just like, everyone's so lazy. Like everyone's just like, I'm an artist. <laughs> and I'm like, cool. What do you do? And they're just like, no, I'm an artist. And I'm like, no, I know. But like. What do you do? Right, right. Yeah. You're looking at it. Yeah. And this is my piece. This is of what I... <laughs> <laughs> it's called artist. Yeah. So there's um, just two so years like, of partying. Get out of there. Yeah. And then uh, g- broke uh, the relationship, went very bad. And then I was like, I can't go back to Ottawa. So I came here. Right. And then did you just start like, what What was the, was that like you knew you wanted to be an actor? I always find the, the really interesting time is when we all go, no, I'm, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. Do you know those moments yep. where you yeah. can actually say, oh, no, I'm an actor and own that title? I don't know title. when that happened. I was a social... I came here, I was a social worker for nine years, but I was Oh, acting. that makes sense to me. <laughs> that makes complete sense to me. Really? Because of, yeah, because even, like, your awareness of that girl and that monologue, like, that's an awareness that not everybody has. Oh, your brain. It's your true, Your brain though. is so lovely. Um, so you did social work here, which also yeah. is, like, a deeper... Um, investigation of humanity. Yeah, but, you know, it is incredible. I did it in Montreal, yeah. and then I did it here. I did it in Ottawa as well. It just kind of uh, was a s- snowballed into this side thing. Uh, so I worked with adults with brain injuries at group homes, and then I worked with um, in Montreal. I, I worked at a day center for people with cerebral palsy. Wow, it was amazing. It was like such an amazing job, and I was auditioning and just starting my career. Like, yeah. came here, I was like, you know meeting casting directors and they're just like no and then <laughs> I don't think any casting director a lot of, in Canada, I think they no. were <laughs> they were like thank you that's more like it thank and then, you and then yeah. the door closes and you hear no no uh, <laughs> do not scribble scribble did you go to school for social work no I <laughs> I know it's very weird so I had a girlfriend okay and uh, she was a social worker and so I used to go and like pick her up from work and like hang out and stuff and I kind of built a relationship with the clients 
and they needed staff and they were like, you already have a relationship. So that led to another job, to another job, to another job. That's insane. Yeah. It was a very weird. You really dodged like, it's almost like um, the guy in suits that gets a legal job without (laughs) having any training. Yeah. It's like, but you have the ability and they must've seen that. Yeah, I think I was like a fresher face for them because I wasn't clinically trained, which also got me into a lot of trouble because I would like towards the end, you know, I wanted to like hug the clients Mm -hmm. and, you know, I had a relationship with them and that was very against the rules. Right. You can't, Danny, you can't touch the clients, but I was like, they never get touched. Like even when we shower them, we shower them with a thing or we'll put something on a loofah sponge and hand it to them, but they wouldn't, they were never touched. It was, wow. So I was just like, that's so fucked up to me. It so is. The human touch is like, that's a huge... It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. But did you always feel like you were... Because um, cause I've been in those situations, not to that extent, but mm-hmm. like where I'm like, I'm in over my head. Yeah. Like, did you always feel like you had the training for that? No, there was like... Because we had clients that were violent or like we would have to call the cops or whatever. Like oh, that, God. those kind of... We had somebody... Somebody had a heart attack and passed away. Like... CPR, like all those, like they would train me for those things, but I wasn't like trained. Right, right, right. Thankfully, I was like always surrounded by other staff member that were way more capable than I was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you were doing that and auditioning Mm -hmm. and then at some point that became less and auditioning became more or did you ever Uh, go like... My husband, who's my boyfriend at the time, was one day he was just like, you're not happy when you come home anymore. And Mm -hmm. I was like... What are you talking about? <laughs> Fuck you. You don't know me. <laughs> oh, I take your point. <laughs> right, right, right. And then uh, from the point that he had said that, it took me two years to quit. Yeah. And then and then when I quit, it was just like, I'm all in. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. It's why, why does that take us two years? I know. I'm so stubborn, though. Yeah. It's like, to my advantage and to everyone else's disadvantage, well, I think. You I know? don't know. I mean, did that, those two years, was that just like... Denying that this could be a life for you or what was, what took you so long? Uh, leaving the clients was really mm. hard for me. I still really miss them. I had really strong relationships with a couple of them and it was really hard. It yeah. was like a breakup because yeah. I knew I, I could go visit them, but that wasn't likely going to happen and it was difficult. It was really hard for me. Yeah. I can imagine that would be tricky too. Yeah. And then was there a time that you like, what was the, the, was there a job that you got or was there a time that you were like, oh no, this is, I'm in. Not um, that I've made it, but they, there's a certain level of like, um, I don't know, being val- validated for your work. Yeah. I think it was just like more auditions. Like auditions started happening more and more. And then I was like, oh, I think I'm on people's radar yeah. now. At least they know who I am enough to bring me in more. Yeah. And say no more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think that started happening. Those relationships are so tricky to build in this city. Yeah. But once you're in, you're just in, I think, you know, whether you book or not, you just see the yeah. same casting people, the same readers, same. And then I just became more comfortable. And then some actor was like, you know, you just got to punch your time card. You just got to go in and audition and audition and yeah. audition. And that really changed my brain. I was just like, oh, yeah, I just got to put the time in. Yeah. You, got, you get frustrated? Do you get frustrated when you don't get like the success that you're looking for? Totally. How do you, how do you deal with that? I quit the other day for 24 hours and I was like, did you you know those days where you're like, no, I quit. What did you do? I just, I watched, uh, like uh, for the day I took my dog for a walk. I watched a bunch of like comedy Netflix and, uh, looked for inspiration. And then the next morning I was okay. (laughs) Sometimes they last longer, but like, you know, those days where you quit. Yeah. Absolutely. How do you, like, what do you do to get over the quittings? I look for inspiration too. Yeah. I, before Christmas, my husband was just like, you're not being a nice person. What do you need? And I was like, I don't know, but I, I need something. I need to be filled up. And yeah. he was like, go, go away. So I went to New York by myself. He handled the kids and I went and saw four plays, went to three museums, ate good food, was totally by myself, came back and I was like, okay, yeah. I'm in. New York Again. does that. Oh, I love it so much. Yeah. Remember we saw each other in yes, New York? Yes, that was so... I just that was had a so flash of that. I think that was the first time we ever met. With, I think so Tommy, too. right? Yeah, because Tommy knew you. Yeah, Tommy... But just like... Barely, barely knew you. Like, and we were on the same bus or something. Yeah, we took the same shuttle from the airport. Yeah. It was, was the weirdest so funny. thing. Yeah. That was like a million years ago. Yeah, that was a million years ago. But New York does that for me too. Mm-hmm. I, maybe that's what I need is like a little um, creative filling. 
Yeah. And yeah. like I, even now though, it's like I'm in between working moms and people are like, congratulations. I'm like, I'm unemployed and I feel crazy. Right. I feel itchy and crazy. See, don't and you like, think that's crazy? Because you are in like two of the top shows. Like you're a Winona or working moms, which is unbelievable for actors, right? Yeah. It but, doesn't feel like that's that it, though like, at all. So how do you, uh, where do you put that? Uh, frustration how do you how do you deal with that I um my husband (laughs) he seems pretty great I mean anyone that calls you on the stuff that he's called you on yeah nobody can call me on my shit like that man can call me on my shit right in such a beautiful way yeah except your children who do it literally hey you got shit on your butt yeah yeah. but don't touch it (laughs) don't touch it don't touch it I'm calling you on it but don't touch it um yeah so how do you what do you do uh I don't I don't know. I feel like... Like when you're going crazy, when your like, skin's crawling because you're like, oh. Yeah. I mean, class helps so much. I go once a week and that really... I always feel like the next day I feel amazing. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it starts building up again. I don't know. Are we ever going to feel satisfied? You know, I think, don't know. I don't think so. Because we're always chasing the thing. It's I like, I, I want to work right. all the fucking time. But I just I, do. I feel like... And the more I talk to people about this, the more I realize that like... Even if you do work all the time, there'll be something else that you want totally. to do. And- Absolutely. But I think it's just expression. I just feel like, especially because I grew up in a household that was just like, shh, you know, it's like very, it was like very strict and it was very like, be quiet yeah. and be more ladylike and be all these things. It was like, I have years of expression that I just need to get out in yeah. whatever way. And I just want to make art with it. And it's, so it's never going to be enough. I don't yeah. think. Um, what was the childhood like then? What do you, what did your parents do? My dad was an RCMP officer and my mom worked for the RCMP. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody just keep, keep, keep shuffling. Yeah. Yeah. Be quiet. Be respectful. Wow. Look normal. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're like breaking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they must be proud of you. We don't really have a relationship. Oh, I don't have a relationship, but my sister's in Ottawa and yeah. my sister is like the fiercest woman on the planet. She's yeah. so amazing. Yeah. And, you know, she, like, doesn't fit in there. She's, like, covered head to toe in tattoos. She is so amazing. But she's, like, you know, her daughter's in high school and she's, like, stuck there because yeah. she's going to – She's. it's so interesting. That town is so interesting. I know. I, I know people that get stuck there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a real thing. Did you uh, – she have no, no connection with your family anymore? She's my sister. Yeah. yeah. Do you miss that? Do you have, like, inklings of, like – uh, I talk, I mean, I talk to my parents once in a while okay. because I have kids. Like since I got kids, I was like, if you like, I should foster a relationship with your grandparents if you would like that yeah, sort of thing. I want to give them the option at least and not just like cut it off because it's my shit. Right. Um, so we're, I'm like facilitating that, but, but not really. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just made me, um, I don't know, aware of like. Being self-sufficient or uh, so many families are so different, you so know? So different. Yeah. Um, do I you never miss? Yeah, what were you going to say? I, I mean, yeah. Do I, uh, do I wish family. I had yeah. parents? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Especially when I got married and had kids. I was yeah. like, oh, my parents aren't here. I don't have parents here. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I still go to therapy once a week and I'm yeah. like, I wish I had a mom, yeah. you know, present in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Do you look for that, um, the mom? Like, do you look for somebody in your life that can represent the... I feel like I've become the mom for, like, a lot of people. Yeah. That's not easy. No. <laughs> that sucks. Get off yeah. my tip. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. No. Like, yeah, I think, I think, uh, but I think that's also pro- my fault, too. You know, like, I want to take care of people. I want to... Right. Yeah. In a lot of different ways. Yeah. So you don't have anybody that's sort of like the the mom role model for you. No. So I guess you do have to find that. Inside. Are you applying for the position? God no! <laughs> Get off my tip. <laughs> yes. The but, mom I always wanted. I uh, no, I find that too. Mm-hmm. Like with my mom and in, in with her dementia, dementia, I was yeah. like, ah, uh, you know, I you know, I miss having somebody to call up and talk about like health issues. Yes. Or like. Becoming a woman in this next phase of my life. Yeah. And someone with wisdom. Yeah. Someone like, yeah. 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 I really miss that. So I, I don't, and I don't, I, that's interesting that you should say, like, I've become my own mom. 
Yeah. Because I think that is part of it. I, I, my therapist said to me one day, she was like, why don't you start parenting yourself the way you wish your parents always parented you? And I was like, everything is exploding inside of me from that statement. I, that's not a thought. And she was like, when you're feeling sick, say Danny, say what you would wish your mom to say to you. Like, it's time to lie down, take a hot water bottle, whatever, like whatever it is. And I was like, that is some self love shit. That is like next level to me. Is that new for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was it like before? Uh, just like kind of like put your head down and get through it. A lot of like survival shit, I think. Yeah, I have that too. Yeah. Just work. Just work. Yeah. You do everything. Like the fact that you're even doing this is, I was thinking about this on the way here, is just so, and you're not half-assing it. Like your podcasts are great. That's lovely. Thank you. They're so good. And the people you're interviewing, like I was like, even just like looking back at all the people. Killer. You just had your one year anniversary. Yeah. 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 Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It feels good. It feels like in our, in the climate that we're in right now, it's something I can do. Yeah. Which I, I uh, hate feeling helpless. And I think you and I are similar in that, like, don't you f- just work, God, yeah, to work. But I don't know what that means, and yeah, I feel like that with the whole um, like Me Too movement and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I had a, I had a really like angry time where I was just like, I want to help these women. Mm-hmm. I want to help people that feel like shit, and I don't know what I can do. Mm-hmm. So how, where did you put that? I anger? emailed a bunch of the women that came out and yeah. just said like, please know that I'm here, and I would like to be an ear or a hug or a coffee or. Whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. Or not. Or none of those things if you just want to hang out or... Because I just didn't know what to do. Yeah, but that's something. I gave me goosebumps. I think that's a really... This is something. This is pretty yeah. great. Well, gosh, you know, we're all doing something. Like, I think that... Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. doing... I do feel like, you know, in the world of uh, disappointments, <laughs> 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 that there's a lot of it and people disappoint you. Yeah. And things like that. But, like... People do the best they can. Yeah. Like, I think your folks are probably doing the best they can. I think so, too. It's just not the best for you. Yeah. 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 And they must miss you. I think they do. I think, yeah, I think they do. And yeah. they express it in their own ways. But there's, like, you know, substance abuse and stuff in yeah. my family that I was just, like, got to a point where I was just, like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. And I had addressed it a bunch of times. And they were just, like, oh, but I don't think I have a problem. And I'm, like, well, I can't do this anymore. So yeah. <laughs> I'm out. That's very healthy of you. Seems like you really look after yourself. Uh, I think I'm learning how. Yeah. I think I'm... And I think... I just posted about this on Instagram yesterday because I think a lot of women are showing me how to do that now, mm-hmm. too. And just stop taking care of other people and start taking care of yourself. Yeah. Like, even, like... This is probably TMI, but, like, even, like, having sex with my husband after, like, 10 years of being together, I'm like, oh, there's, like, things that I don't ask for that I... I'm like, I'm going to try that out now, you know, (laughs) like I'm going to like try to say things differently (laughs) or like whatever. Like, yeah, it just seems so different. I'm also pushing 40. So it's like, it's just new. My body's different. Yeah. I feel different. It's your brain is different. So different. Everything's just like slowing down a little bit. And yeah, it's really nice. Even these conversations, like I feel like I'm talking to women differently mm-hmm. now agreed yeah where it's like a lot of the like uh the noise around talking to women before is like gone and now we're just like hey yeah how are you yeah you know, it's like i love that me too i love it so much your working mom set must be amazing for crazy fierce women it's great like that cast and like mm-hmm. the creators and, and we're all so different yeah we're such different women which is very cool yeah, Juno, even at that LA when we got off the plane, there were so many women from Toronto. And it was so, all these actresses I hadn't really talked to before. And then there was Juno, who I didn't know. And she was so grumpy and so just like <laughs> texting on her phone, which she's not, she's not like a phone texter person, but she was just like on her phone, not talking to anybody. And I was like, I like you so much. <laughs> Who are you? Why are you so grumpy? Yeah. And she's just like, I, she was so nervous. Yeah. And she's like, she hadn't done a lot of TV and film. And, and somebody um, was talking to me the other day about, we had a working moms event the other day and she was, she's in the cast. She's new this season. And she was like, I just didn't know if I should come or. This is Nelu? Like, yeah. And I was like. I adore her. She's so great. Yeah, she's fantastic. And also so fierce. She's just hustling. Yeah. And so she was like, I don't know if I should come or not. I didn't know if anybody would want me there. I was like, this is not that set. And and you should know that by now. That like Juno on um, first season 
was like, oh my God, Danny, somebody just ordered breakfast. Like they asked an AD to bring them breakfast. And I was like, yeah. And she was like, is that like, is that like diva-ish? And I was like, no, dude, we don't have time to eat breakfast. Like you got to get it down now. So we got it. And she was like, Oh, like we can do this? This is a thing? Yeah. I was like, yes, Judo. I mean, and do I it like, nicely. Yeah, <laughs> but exactly. Don't be a Bro- dick. Yeah. <laughs> but she was like, she's so new yeah. that she was like, I didn't know that. And I was yeah. like, that's the set that we're on. Yeah. Where people are just normal, nice. Yeah. They don't even know that you can order breakfast. It's just like, it's great. When I checked into my hotel first season of Mr. D, mm-hmm. I was like, oh. <gasps> This hotel is too nice. <laughs> it was like, and it, looking back, I'm like, it wasn't any great shakes. It was just like a suite with a kitchen. I'm like, yeah. oh, you should save your money. And I called the producers. I'm like, save your money. This what? is unnecessary. I won't, I can, like, I can be in a smaller room if you oh need. Oh my God. To. Idiot. Did now you're like, in a smaller give room. Give me a pink. <laughs> I like, want a pink limousine. That's right. I want a breakfast. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird how we do that. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, like, you're... And so you seem so busy. I'm not. But you're not. So what do you I'm do not. with your creative brain when you're not? Well, my beautiful, beautiful agents... Yes. I have two agents that work together. And they sat me down last year and said, we've had a meeting about you. And I was like... Whoa. <laughs> and they were like, why aren't you directing? I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I've never considered that. And they... I was like, why do you think I should? And they were like, here's our pitch. And they listed all the reasons why they thought. And I had never even entertained the idea. And so I've spent the last year when I'm not on set just like reading about directing and hounding directors that I know, asking them all these questions. So I st- And then my agent just recently was like, why aren't you writing? And I was like, because I'm not a writer. And he was like, well, what are you scared of? And I was yeah. like, ugh, stop. <laughs> stop. So he's... They're really beautifully nudging me to make stuff. And I can't, I was like, should I be getting my O1 visa? What should I be doing right now? Yeah. And he was like, you can't work on anything. Like, what can you, Yeah. it's pilot season. You can't do pilots. So he was like, take that six grand that you would spend on your visa and make something with it. I was like, man. That's so smart. They're brilliant. They're so smart. Who are your agents? Uh, Doug Patterson and Adam Stutt. Yeah. That's so smart. They're such smart men. Um, tell me more about directing, because that's also... I'm totally interested in that world. Really? Too. Yeah, I definitely... I did a little directing this year, and I was like, oh, what I did you like do? this. Just like a web series for a friend of mine. That's where I'm at right now, is like writing something. Oh, it's not easy. None of this is easy, but... Do you have a writing partner, or do you write by yourself? Um, both. Uh, I write by myself, and then um, Teresa Pavlenek is my script editor for the show I'm working Amazing. on with CBC. She's killer. And then um, I have a husband named Matt Barham that is also a great. Yeah. Um, is that weird for you guys working together? Or you just done it for so long now? Yeah, we've done it for so long. Like, yeah. it still is weird. But it's still, it's good. I like the whatever struggles we go to because it's fun. Like, at the end of the day, we have laughs together. and That's good. We still like each other. And what does your husband do? He's a personal trainer and a musician. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's a good balance of yeah. creativity. And... He's an artist for sure. Yeah. Like he is very artistic and understands art and comes and audits my classes and he's what? very supportive. He and audits very... your acting classes? Yeah. He's so supportive and lovely. And like last year got thrown into the fire, like doubled down on dad duty without, like he didn't want to. And and I think was a little resentful of it and it was because a big your shift for career us. career stuff? He was like... Working mom straight to Winona Earp, straight to back to working mom. So it was a psycho year. This year's not like that at all. But, like, it was a psycho year that was really hard on our marriage. Mm-hmm. Like, life was great, but marriage was really fucking hard last yeah. year. Yeah. Thanks for saying that. Like, I, I was think the that's really healthy. <laughs> it's hard, yeah. right? It's yeah. a hard balance. I was like, I don't know if we're going to come out of this. Yeah. Like, that happened twice. That happened when we first had our first baby. I was, like, the darkest year for us. And then we found our groove and we got better. We went to couples therapy, which was amazing. And then uh, last year, when when I worked so much, it was, like, the second time where I was, like, fuck, man. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, but now it's better. It's, like, now it's, like, we found each other again. We were slowing yeah. down. Is that, do you think, is that the key? Like, what do you think helped get you guys back on track? We went back to therapy, and that was, like, the biggest note we got. Because we're both, like, very excitable, Mm -hmm. very passionate, artistic people Mm -hmm. that when we fight, it's just, like, fiery and crazy and, you know, we love hard and fight hard. Mm -hmm. 
And the therapist was like, you just got to slow down. Like mm-hmm. when you're fighting, you got to slow it down. And it's helped so much. Yeah. What does that mean, slow down? Like in the moment, slow down? Mm-hmm. Of like, let's step, step back. Yeah. Because, you know, it just gets fiery. It gets yeah. fiery. It's like you light a match and then it's like... Yeah. The whole thing. We're just fiery people. Yeah. <laughs> but you've been together for 10 years. 10 years, right? yeah. That's an amazing chapter. Yeah. You know? How long have you guys been together? Yeah, like 10, 10 years. It doesn't feel like it, eh? It doesn't. It's like a weird timeline. Yeah. I, I still have a crush on him. Mm. Like, I still, like... <laughs> we, just, we were just in the park this morning and I... And we missed each other because I was walking the dog and uh, and we were texting. I was like, well, come back. And we came back just to say oh, goodbye. Oh, that's I know. so and I was nice. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not always great. No, sometimes it's, <laughs> but, sometimes you're like, I don't like you at all. Yeah. And then <laughs> other times you get butterflies to see each other. Yeah. It's really lovely. But slowing down like that, you know, so that you're not just reacting. That's what we do. Yeah. Which is such a weird thing because acting is reacting. Is reacting. Yeah. So then you're like going against all your instincts. Yeah. That's amazing. It's hard of growing up. It's right? so weird. So you're going to focus on some directing and some writing. What do you do that's not, like, business-oriented? Uh, my kids. Yeah. It's mostly just my kids. Do you have projects with them where you're like, well, you have your, your chore chart, chore chart <laughs> which I'm a big fan of. Fucking dress yourself. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, do you have, like, things that you guys have as projects as a family? No, it's mainly just survival right now. Yeah. Like, really, it's just like Ben and I put them in the car this morning in their car seats, strapped them in so they couldn't move. We shut the doors and we just stood on the sidewalk and hugged each other and, like, for like, slowed it down. Yeah, for like three minutes. I just feel like he was in the shower the other day. This is a horrible story. <laughs> he was like in the shower. I was taking a shit. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. I was taking a shit. <laughs> in the, we were just like, in the bathroom. And he's in the shower, and he was like, I feel like I want to ball my eyes out right now. He's like, I'm so tired today. It's yeah. just like adding up. Like, being a dad is adding up. Yeah. And I was like, I feel the exact same. I'm exhausted. And then he started trying to get his crying out. So he go. He was like <laughs> naked in the shower, and he was going... <laughs> <laughs> and I was like taking shit. I was oh like, my god, babe, are you okay? He's like, uh huh. I'm just, I'm just trying to get out. Like, oh, that's fantastic. You got this. You got. It's just psycho. Like I feel like our. But that's a great. That's fantastic. That's our. When life. you're writing, that's a scene. <laughs> that's fantastic. That's our life. Like, like we don't have much going on when we're not working. It's just those moments. A whole bunch of those moments. Yeah. I feel like. You, just, you're such a self-aware person. Like, I've always, anytime I've seen you at, like, parties, I'm like, I've always enjoyed, like, mini interaction, but mm-hmm. you're so present. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Where do you think you get that from? Because it's not from the, the cop folks. Uh, it's not from the cop <laughs> folks. The, I think that's, but I think it's, I rebelled against that. Right. You know? And, like, also, I came from a household that was, like, very intense, but it wasn't spoken about. So, yeah. I think there's, like, a survival. I read something a while ago that's, like, gnawing at me, and it said... Who would we be without our trauma? Yeah. And that, I can't stop thinking about it because I think that that has made me such a great actor. Great actor. Good actor. It's like, you know, it's you making take great. me. You take great. You own that I didn't mean it like that. But, you know, it's like it's giving me, trying to survive in a household that was like walking on eggshells yeah. has made me so present. Yeah. I'm really aware of like, because it's survival to be like, what's going to strike? What's going to go wrong? How am I going to get out of it? Those kind of things. And I think that that has made me also like, I want to pay attention to you because I want to know who you are. So I know if I'm safe. I think it's like a lot of that kind of pathology. I think. I don't know, but that's what I think. Your instincts must be super on, like on. All the time. Yeah. 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 That's why you're so exhausted at the end of the day. Yeah. (laughs) It's like traveling to another country when you don't speak the language. Yeah. Yeah. And you're hyper aware of everything. Yeah. It's like, I call it like going to Walmart on a Saturday where you're just like oh, very God. overstimulated oh, all God. the time. Hell. Hell. Yeah. Costco. The worst. Don't do that to yourself. Ikea. Yeah. Saturday. No. No, thank you. No. But I think a lot of actors have this. I think we all... That instinct, you mean? Yeah. On some level, we all feel like, you know, you can walk into a room, you're at a party and you're like, oh, that person in the corner is sad. You know, yeah. you're just like, you feel it. 
You might have it a little bit up a notch. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you do. I do feel like even the awareness of that monologue story, like, uh, I, I feel like sometimes I don't pay attention to my instincts because I'm exhausted. Yeah, 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 Does yeah. Does that make sense? Totally. I like, think that's why we're on our phones. and That's why we watch TV a lot of the times. That's yeah. why we, you know, have vices. Yeah. And also if you're like mom to everyone, which seems like yeah. that's your job yeah. too, right? Like, do you get, is that exhausting? Because you must have that on every set. I do, but I f- feel like people that are very close to me are just like, that's enough now. Mm. You know, like I have good people around me being like calling me out on shit, which is, thank God. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah, yeah. you do. Good people. Um, I, I hate this part cause I have to wrap it up, but okay. I want to, I hate it. I honestly, and I've told myself like, you got to stop talking after an hour because I could Has talk. Has it been an hour? Yeah. I know. And it's going to go on for a little longer anyway, but I just always, I feel like I could talk forever with you. You're so, you're so checked in. But you it's have so a great. whole bottle of champagne to drink. Right? I can't. You got to get on that. We, somebody's got to finish that. <laughs> um, um, but the thing I do, I also like to do, cause I think these chats are really, um, they echo inspiration. Mm-hmm. And, um, so, uh, we've started like a book club. Are you reading anything that you're really jazzed about? I'm reading the drama of the gifted child, which is like, uh, I, I have had this book for so long and I'll read like two pages at a time yeah. because it's such an investigation into humanity and people and pathology and all those things that I can only read, like, two pages at a time, and then I have to, like, do all this reflection on it. It's taking me so long. What What is it? Like, is it because you're... Are you a gifted child? Do I... Am no, I not, not even a Showing little. the respect I should. Um, I could... What is the, shit on my ass is, still? I yeah. mean... <laughs> I mean, maybe. Maybe that's how gifted you are. It doesn't matter to you. It doesn't matter. I don't um, care. What's the, what's the premise of the book? Um... 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 I don't even know if I can like describe it. It's like a, it's not a story though. It's like it's a not a story. It's like a, a therapist talking about like a lot of her work and the work she's done and what she has found working with people and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's intense. That's not time intense reading. Book. No, I like to read a lot of like um, uh, just like human stories. Mm. You know, like like biographies. Yeah. I'm a big biography nerd. Yeah. When's la- what's the last biography you read? I listened on uh, audio to, um, um, oh my God, Breaking Bad. Oh. Brian um, Cranston. Brian Cranston. And also, um, oh my God, hashtag okay. me too. He just got called out on a whole bunch of stuff. Oh no. Which one? Um, right. Is a biography about him? On uh, Transparent. The, uh, oh yeah. Jeffrey um, T- Tambor? Yes. Jeffrey Tambor. I, it was amazing. Yeah, he's an interesting guy. His book was amazing. And then all that stuff came out and I was like, I'm not surprised based on even just listening to him because they read it. Do you listen to audio? Yeah. Audible.com? I'm not. I just, I'm a podcaster, so I listen to a lot of mm. podcasts. But I feel like those are mini biographies too. Totally. But, totally. Um, they're really interesting. But yeah, go on. The so, way he spoke about himself was not self-deprecating, but there was a self-awareness about his darkness oh and that's i was like i haven't heard somebody talk about their darkness like this before and then uh, then all that stuff came out and i was just like yeah totally yeah i'm not surprised i'm sure he's not surprised yeah that's interesting so he reads his own book Mm -hmm. brian cranston did too oh i love that it's so cool it's so good so and where are you putting all this um this me too stuff like how how are you navigating um, just a lot of conversations with yeah. people, like a lot of conversations and it opened up great conversation with my agents. Oh, I had great conversations with them about the business and continue to, I think there's a lot of shit going down Yeah, and a lot of shit that's coming out. It's going to keep coming out. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're right. The conversations that we're, we're having are really great now. Yeah. Um, another for are you uh, see, binge watching anything? Are you TV or movie? Anything that's really inspired you? I watched Smilf. Have you watched that? No, I hear that's really good. Oh my god, it's Rosie good. O'Donnell is next. I've never seen her do a role like this. Before. Really? Oh my god, she's so good. That's amazing. She's so good. That was really good. That's the last thing I binge watched. Yeah. You? What are you watching? Oh, um, it was <laughs> uh, okay. It's um, Juliet Stevenson. 
and um, it's it's a BBC mystery. It's Retribution. Retribution. On Netflix? No. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It's really good. Maybe it's on American Netflix, but it's really good. I mean, I'm such a fan of all those BBC shows. Yeah? Why? Have you Why? seen Scott and Bailey? No. You're welcome, because that's going to be <laughs> so good. It's Scott Bailey as these two police ladies, and they're not like, we're ladies, and they're just right. like flawed, messed up ladies. What? It's so good. I don't want to tell you anything about okay. it, but it's so good. Start there. And you know, like Broad Church. Yeah. You've seen that stuff? I have not. <gasps> okay. I know. I have not seen No, no. It. It's the best. Like, it's just it, because it's real people. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the thing I love about, like, working moms, too, is, like, you guys are all beautiful, but you're also very real looking. I know. Like, there's no... I'm so glad about yeah, that. Yeah. And you're not, like, made up to the nth degree. No. Because you guys could be dolled up. And I mean, we are a little bit, but the hair and makeup team is, like, constantly just making us look normal. Real. Thank God. I know. And I love that. And it's, like, the conversations are real. And it's... Yeah. There's oftentimes on set, because we all had such young... I mean, uh, Catherine and I had such young kids starting this, that uh, Linda, who does our makeup, would turn to me and be like... There's nothing I can do for you today. <laughs> I was like, thank you. Thanks, Linda. Yeah. She's the most amazing. I'm right in the pocket ever. for this scene. Then. <laughs> um, what's a question that you wish I would ask you? Oh, man. I don't know, actually. I don't know how to. Um, I was hope I came in hoping this would be like super conversational. And, yeah. and I'm also glad that it wasn't. Like, everything about the business. No, you know what I mean? I get like tired of that. Yeah. Do you listen... I listen to um, Sam James um, off camera. No, I don't listen to that. It's him interviewing all of these actors, which I find so interesting because it's like a lot of them talk about their process and their yeah. love of work, and I love that so much. But after a certain point, I'm like, you're so self-involved and self-indulgent, and I hate actors. Yeah, it's like, right. it gets to that <laughs> right. point where I'm just yeah. like, enough. Yeah. Talk about something else. And that's what this is. Yeah, it feels like we can go deeper than... Yeah. And not having the buzz of a party around. And Aren't those the worst situations? A little bit. Do you get socially anxious? I get very, very anxious. Do and you? I don't drink. Um, and I don't do drugs. So it's really... How do you deal with your social anxiety then? I feel like it's harder for me to talk myself into doing those situations than it is doing a hard scene. Yeah. You know when you get like super scared before you do a scene? Or you get really nervous or whatever. It's, like, easier for me to do that than to go to a party. Yeah. Those situations make me really sweaty and really uncomfortable. And I don't... Yeah. So what's your... How, how do you? Because you have to go. I usually um, have a buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Buddies help a lot. Like, Juno. Thank God Juno's on the show because... I'm like, okay, can we meet outside and walk in together? Or, like, my husband will, you know, sometimes come with me and... Yeah. I always like want him to enter before me. I don't want to, I don't want anybody looking when I, it's just very, it makes me so anxious. I don't really like dressing up and like, I just went for a fitting the other day for CSA awards and I left crying because I was oh, like, no. I don't, I feel like a failure as a woman because I don't feel no. like I can put myself in that idea of that woman, which is the ideal woman for so many people. You know what I mean? So I was like, that's awful. And I just that's a bad that's a bad stylist. It's bad. Yeah. Oh, I just hit the mic. Um, it's bad, but I mean they they design a certain that's their collection. It's just not for me. But then it's not for you. Then they've I shouldn't have misread their like. There's no way you shouldn't come out of a fitting not feeling like da 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 da. Like you should yeah. always right. Like you should never wear something in public that you don't feel 150. percent Yeah, I'm just learning that now. This is all yeah. new. Like these parties, this like that tiff when I saw you, like oh, yeah. that, those, that was so new to me. Yeah. Juno and I sat in the corner eating like deep fries, mac and cheese balls. And somebody asked us if we worked there. And I was just, <laughs> just like, this is perfect. This yeah. is my kind of night. Yeah. Like this is perfect for me. But like the schmoozing and all that. So anxious. Yeah. Um, see what I did? I need to wrap it up. I you're know, fantastic. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, I kept it going. No, you're fantastic. I really enjoyed talking. I with did you. too. I really did. did I miss Thank anything you for this. talking with you. I, I know I, there'll be follow ups. I want to do like follow up firecracker. Okay. Or we like, what's it like now? Six months, a year, or whatever. I'm like, well, my husband left me. No, my kids are <laughs> just <No>. kidding. <laughs> what's your What's your advice? If you have like um, advice to your younger self, what would you say? Um. 
it's this is like so classic, but just uh, to love yourself more. Yeah. I met a woman this year who was Jess Salguero. She's on our show. I don't I meet her this year, but we had a talk this year about she went away somewhere. See, now I'm talking more. This is what I'm, I'm sorry. I love it. I'm sorry. I'm going to take out that story of mine. And <laughs> so cool. On. She went away on a trip and she bought a ring. And when she, she saw it every day, she saw it, she's like, I don't need that. I don't need that. But she saw it. And then on her last day of her trip, she was like, you know what? I'm just going to buy it. And she bought it. And she came back and she made a promise to her. She proposed to herself. And she woke up one morning and she had a ceremony in her apartment. And she married herself. And I wanted to ball. I was like, if I would have known that in my 20s, that I could actually have a relationship with myself and love myself and get to know myself and be like, what is that? Or why do you like that? Or all the shit that I do for other people, why am I not doing I wish I would have known that in my 20s. Yeah. I just thought that was the smartest thing I'd ever heard. Yeah. I wish, I wish somebody would have told me that. So actively, what does that look like for you when you say, like, be kind to yourself? What is that in actuality? I think, like, taking myself out on a date, you know? Going like New York. Sp- yeah. 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 Spending more time with me and, um, and then also, I think the flip side of that, though, is letting people see that part, too. You know, letting people see it's okay for me to take care of myself and not take care of you for a second, mm-hmm. you know, like that, that's, that would be nice. Do you do that? <laughs> Uh, I'm learning. Yeah. I'm learning. Who isn't, hey? I'm learning so much. That's so good. Well, thanks. Thank thanks you. Thanks so much. I really could talk to you forever. You're fantastic. I could too. This was the greatest. Yeah. And that's Danny Kind. I mean, if you loved her before, you're probably crazy about her now. Uh, and if you kind of knew her before, I feel like we really got a chance to get to know her in this uh, podcast, which I which I just love about the Firecracker Department. Um, go check out our other episodes and uh, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at uh, Firecracker D-E-P-T. Almost forgot it. Remembered it at the end. And follow Danny Kind, too, at Danny Kind. Easy. And uh, tell her what you thought about this episode. Tell her how much she's adored and how kick-ass she is, because she really is. Uh, Drop me a line to tell me about what you are up to. Uh, Join in the last Sunday of every month for our discussion that is live on Instagram. Drop me a line in any form. I would love to hear from you, and I will write back. Cross my heart. Uh, Thank you so much for listening today, and uh, go on out there. Go get inspired or be inspiring circle back. Let me know what you're up to. I would love to support whatever you're working on. And I'm sure a lot of people in our community, in our department would love to as well. Thanks for listening, everybody. I'm Naomi Sneekus, and this has been the Firecracker Department. Bye.